Welcome to uh, Lesson 3 of Module 6 on Hypothesis Testing. This little discussion is entitled, Why I Have an Alternate Hypothesis? Ha ha ha, and I'm not laughing. Brought to you by the infamous Dr. Dog. We utilize an alternate hypothesis in statistics because we are always and continuously devilishly clever, not to mention handsome and good looking as well. Consider the following. Our hypothesis test is based upon the concept that we have only two possible outcomes, the null hypothesis and the alternate hypothesis. For this uh, method of argument to work, the null hypothesis and the alternate hypothesis must be completely mutually exclusive. The null hypothesis makes a claim. The alternate hypothesis says the opposite of that claim. If we have only two cases, to accept one is to reject the other. For example, if we have a null hypothesis and an alternate hypothesis, and we accept the alternate hypothesis, that is to reject the null hypothesis. If we reject the null hypothesis, that is to accept the alternate hypothesis, because of all these two possible claims, only one can be true, and if one is rejected, the other is accepted. Likewise, if we reject the alternate hypothesis, that is to accept the null hypothesis. If we accept the null hypothesis, we reject the alternate hypothesis because only one of these can be true at a time. They are mutually exclusive. To reject one is to accept the other, and to accept one is to reject the other. Only one of these mutually exclusive cases can be true at any given time. To reject one is to accept the other. Notice that we have a null hypothesis and we have an alternate hypothesis. Now, we have not yet learned to write the alternate hypothesis, but remember what we learned about the null hypothesis. The null hypothesis is a claim about the population which says that the mean of the population is some value or could claim that the true percentage in the population is some value, p equals or mu equals. The alternate hypothesis will be the other side of that claim. This is actually a very complex form of mathematical argument known as modus tollendus ponens. Upon it we found our hypothesis, and modus tollendus ponens says that if it is A or B, one of two options, and it is not A, then it is B. Pretty clever, isn't it? I told you we were devilishly clever. Oh, what a tangled web we weave when first we practice modus tollendus ponens in our statistical hypothesis test. Keep in mind that we have only two possible outcomes, the null hypothesis or the alternate hypothesis. If we can reject one of them, then it leads us to accept the other one. Welcome back to the dog cave. Uh, you've enjoyed this little discussion about the null hypothesis and the alternate hypothesis, but I just simply want to reinforce it for you that what you do is you have developed a situation in which you have only two possibilities, and these possibilities are mutually exclusive. It is either the first one or it is the second one. If it's not the first one, it's the second. If it's not the second, then it's the first. Those of you who are raising children fully understand this type of argument. When a child says, you're either going to let me go or not let me go, they're learning to argue modus tollendus ponens. Hmm, wonder what their null hypothesis would be. How fun. Thank you.